Good morning, this is Kello Land on the go with all you need to know in news and weather as you start your day. Democratic presidential candidate Kamala Harris's pick of Minnesota Governor Tim Walz as her running mate is creating political buzz even in conservative parts of the state. Many people we spoke with in Laverne, Minnesota say a Republican stronghold were caught off guard about Walz's selection. But once the surprise wore off, some voters thought it was a good idea. You know, now that I think about it, it might be a pretty good thing. I don't know. I just, I know it's tough times and it's kind of scary. Other Minnesotans we spoke with say Walls should not be on the Democratic ticket, saying he's too liberal, especially on issues like abortion. The leader of the South Dakota Democratic Party is excited about Harris's pick for a running mate. He says Walls's Midwestern roots help round out the ticket. He's a governor who grew up in a small rural town, shares a lot of the same values that we have, and I think that's something that uh, has been missing from our national politics is people that share a lot of our same values that represent the folks in the heartland. So, when We asked Republican South Dakota Governor Kristi Noem about her views on the VP selection while she made a stop in Sturgis. He has been anti-freedom. In fact, he's been a governor that as the CEO of his state mandated um, to his people, told them what to do, took away their freedoms, took away their businesses. Um, he's an extremist and it's going to be probably the most left um, socialist ticket party or ticket that we've seen running for president in the United States. No man walls served in Congress together before they both became governors. Now let's get a check of our weather with meteorologist Scott Munn staying on the cool side today, Scott. Well, we are looking at temperatures to remain below average, and that will really be the case for tomorrow going into Friday. Some of those overnight lows may fall to the 40s across northern Kettleland. In the meantime, today we'll have highs in the 70s and 80s. Watching these scattered showers and thunderstorms this morning, they are weakening as they are moving to the east. But expect redeveloping thunderstorms in southeastern Kettleland later this afternoon and evening. Brian will have more details on that coming up. Thank you, Scott. First responders in the Black Hills may find themselves with a busy week at work this week because of the Sturgis Motorcycle Rally. Sean Fisher, ambulance director for Sturgis Fire and EMS, says that when the rally is not going on, they get around six calls each day. But now that number roughly ranges from 12 to 25. You have the individuals that are happy to see you, glad you're there to take care of them. You'll have the next ones that are mad. You're ruining their fun. I want to throw out a huge thank you to all of the EMS personnel in this state and in this county and in the greater Black Hills right now that are dealing with the rally. Everybody knows that the rally's here. Everybody is paying attention to the rally and whether they're manning their stations or they're staying super close to the station, um, everybody is giving up their week to be a part of the rally and help those that are, are here visiting. Maggie Brown, a firefighter with the Doty Volunteer Fire Department, tells Kettle Land News that this is what the first responders train for. Highway 385 is one of the connecting roads in the Black Hills that rally riders try to use to travel from Deadwood to Hill City. Recently, the project finished phase one so that riders could access the road. However, part of the road is gravel. Riders still travel through each day to enjoy the views of the Black Hills. I've been all over the country, really. I've ridden Yellowstone and, and down around Florida and everywhere else. And there is no better riding in the entire USA than the Black Hills of South Dakota. Highway 385 is open during construction to all from Hill City, uh, Deadwood to Hill City. Riders are advised, though, to use caution when riding through the gravel areas. And that's a look at some of our top stories. Now let's get one last look at your weather with meteorologist Brian Karstens. Brian? All right, watching some showers and thunderstorms in that forecast as uh, we're keeping an eye on maybe a little severe weather this evening. The uh, Storm Prediction Center continues this marginal risk in the green. That does uh, include Sioux Falls, runs up through Mitchell, Yankton, and about over to Sioux City, Iowa. So we'll watch that. Uh, the short-term forecast, this kind of hones in on some of these trends here of thunderstorm tracks. You'll notice that 5 o'clock, 6 o'clock, 
Yep, even as far north as maybe Madison, but Sioux Falls, see these little strips of green in there? Those are representative thunderstorm tracks. And you know, it's possible a few of you could pick up you know, that half inch to an inch of rain with these thunderstorms. So that's actually a, a pretty good thing considering how dry things have been lately. There's a closer look at it on Futurecast. I think for the next few hours, we'll get these scattered showers and isolated thunderstorms. And then the tendency will be to kind of regroup here through the early afternoon, allow those temperatures to come back into the upper 70s from Sioux Falls to Mitchell. Notice Aberdeen, you're not quite as warm. We already have this front moving in. The clouds are a little thicker too and the shower chances will be there. And then those bigger storms, they tend to fire up right along and ahead of that cold front. So I'll be really curious to see what that looks like from, let's say, Cedar County, Nebraska, through Yankton, possibly Sioux Falls, kind of hit that 5 o'clock, 6 o'clock, 7 o'clock time frame. That seems to be where we're honing in on the best probability there. That's exactly what future cast shows there. So keep an eye on the weather. Uh, we'll be here in the storm center if any of that does turn severe. And the main threat would be some hail. Just given some colder temperatures aloft in those clouds, that's a little bit easier to form. Highs today, we're up to 83 in uh, Mitchell, about the same in Yankton, 76 in Brookings, and cooler 70s in the north. Tonight, look at this north wind and those lows in the 40s. Buffalo, Faith, even Aberdeen at 48, and tomorrow. The question is, how warm are we going to get in the northeast? Probably upper 60s, Sisseton, Watertown, Brookings, Ortonville. Looks like 73 in Rapid City. By the way, the rain chance will regroup in the southwest tomorrow. I do think Sioux Falls will stay dry. Friday, Saturday dry. Most of Sunday, that's where it gets a little tricky. We've got another system coming in probably Sunday night into Monday. That's our best chance of rain on the extended forecast. Temperatures will be climbing eventually, but they're not in any hurry to move uh, a lot higher. So most of the days ahead will be below normal with low 70s, more September type weather. Pier also in the 70s tomorrow, Friday, Saturday. We'll pick up that rain chance Sunday into Monday. That could last into Tuesday. And eventually we start to gain some traction on those highs in western South Dakota with highs in the low to mid 80s by Monday and Tuesday. But it still looks like off and on wet weather the next 72 hours. Check out more details of the forecast online at kettleland.com.